This podcast was created by fans for fans and is not affiliated with or sponsored by Hallmark or the Hallmark channel. This is Eric. And this is Sydney. And this is Hallmark Mysteries. And more. Picture it, Eric. It is a dark and dreary day. It begins to mist a bit. You are taking your dog for a walk and you pass by that one house, that house that you hate to walk by. It's shabby and not in the chic way. And it always looks like someone is peeking from behind a curtain, although you know it's been empty for decades. This time you definitely see a curtain move. But before you can process it, there's a distant boom of thunder and your dog takes off running. Are you in the spooky mood yet, Eric? I don't know. I think I am chasing after my dog. And I (laughs) even have a spooky Halloween dog since he's a tripod with only three legs, right? There you go. He's off running. I'm, yeah, I am not about the uh, bravery. I will fully admit I am cowardly hightailing it out of there. Getting Good. ready to hit my couch to watch a Halloween movie, Woo-hoo. which is the whole discussion we're going to have today is for those of you who may not be into the horror flicks on Halloween, what are some alternatives? And Sydney and I are each going to share three of our favorite spooky, and I use uh, spooky, at least for me, quite mm. broadly movies that you may be good for halloween are you ready to roll ready as ever but i think think what i do is as you get ready to talk about our cocktails and get us going i should have a bowl of my halloween blueberries which i eat (gasps) why everyone does their pumpkin spice latte fall is my season for my blueberries i have boxes upon box i go when it first appears I literally fill up the shopping cart with as many blueberries as I can. He's got to have those blueberries. Yes. Because that's what a ghost would have. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so our signature cocktail for this spooky episode is the autumn teeny because it is just so festive. Um, the ingredients are cinnamon and sugar, caramel infused vodka, apple liqueur, and of course, apple cider. Um, and you'll want like a cinnamon stick and an apple slice for garnish. You know, you put the cinnamon sugar around the rim and then you mix up the vodka, liquor, cider, shake, pour into a glass and you garnish it with that cinnamon stick and apple slice. And you are all about that fall life when it comes <laughs> Sound good to me. Yes. Oh my gosh. Eric, I thought it would be fun to ask you some rapid fire uh, Halloween themed questions to start. Um, so just tell me like what comes to your mind. <laughs> uh, that's a dangerous uh, game to play, but all right. Okay. What is your favorite Halloween candy? Oh, easy dots. Dots. Okay, mine's Reese's peanut butter cups. Those what are fantastic. Is your... <laughs> yeah. What is and also let me say they're very generous this time of year. Like when if you get like the decent sized ones, those are yummy. But uh what is your favorite Halloween villain? Like from anything. Like Wait, villain? Villain. Yeah. Oh, villain. I thought you said villain. I'm like, what? Oh. Like alternative holiday? I'll just slide Valentine's <laughs> no. Day in October 31st. It's Day. <laughs> oh, my Halloween villain. Hmm. Tough, tough question. I'm going to go with the um the the realtor and the um woman the the wife in beetlejuice who are trying to redo the house oh my gosh i was just about to say beetlejuice is my favorite he's not a villain. villain yeah because you love to hate him 
like he is kind of a villain about the way he treats those poor people who are newly deceased but but wait you're going you're you're doing beetlejuice too yeah that was my that's my favorite halloween villain is beetlejuice there we go we i like i said i just found that the the wife trying to redo and tear down the house and everything with the with the uh realtor to be far worse than be little juice yes. actually so i think you're looking for it in the actual villain sense and i'm looking in it like it's the really fun villain gotcha. like yeah okay but we it's funny how we picked the same uh, movie from whatever 1986 or whenever that was it's such a great movie so uh what was your favorite halloween costume growing up well here's a funny story about that so growing up Oh, wait, it's not appropriate for this. I shouldn't do this. We'll get canceled. Okay. But I'll just go move on is rather than going growing up, I'm going to go with after when I uh, like late college and post college, I was known for being able to come up with the costume for under five bucks. Now, granted, this was before crazy current inflation. So one year. I like was a carrot where I just went and got a piece of orange, uh, whatever poster board, cut it in a triangle and then bought a thing of carrots that I tied on my head. Uh, another time I was, uh, was, a uh, uh, eyeball where I just got a big round circle and colored in an eyeball. So these were about low rent of costumes as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. And it just sort of became my thing. And so I had a I had a stretch for about six years. I really like Halloween. Halloween is it's a good holiday. It's understandable. It is a good holiday. I was a uh, my favorite was like three I don't it was more like 10 years ago now, but I was the crafting queen and I took like this existing you dress. You have to dress up. Oh, I know. And I, I took this existing dress and I uh, put all sorts of different types of tissue paper attached to it. And then I did like a crown where I said, it, and then I had these giant gold scissors, nice. like they were fake. They were paper mache, but they were giant. And I just walked around. I actually was at a party that year and I won the costume competition, which that I is- never win that stuff. So that is nice. absolutely awesome. So years ago when my son was little, we went to the costume shop because once again, with your kids, you spend way too much money on costumes for them. And he went and he picked out this Eeyore costume and it was awesome. It had a whole Eeyore head that would go over like a hood. He absolutely just loved it. And it was like, you know, I can't wait for Halloween. Can't wait for Halloween. And then when Halloween came, he would not put it on. It was the forcing him to put it on so he could get some pictures and every picture is him literally bawling and it is why what happened he just decided he did not want anything to do with eeyore and we're like we spent did you ask him this. he was like two and a half years old oh so, okay. yeah it's like little and so we're like yeah basically forcing our torturing our kid into this costume, and for pictures of which like i said they're all unusable because it looks like we beat the kid as far as like there so Uh, i think i think it's a rite of passage when you're a kid if your parent doesn't like dress you in something that you absolutely hate because when i was one they dressed me like a clown and like i don't know why clowns were a thing by the way um but anyways they and then they would bring me and they would like show me me in the mirror and I'd start screaming because I didn't want to see exactly what are you people thinking anyways okay what's your favorite Halloween party song party song yeah are you a monster masher or yeah, that's what i'm saying it's kind of i think you just have to go you know what i'm good i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little twist on it. i'm gonna go with thriller little michael jackson oh thriller. that is perfect i'm a oingo boingo dead man's party so okay. we're 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 doing we're staying in the 80s with all this i think it was probably like one of the more <laughs> prominent halloween dec- or, yeah decades right. Uh, Which okay. is, I'm an 80s guy, so that must be why I like it so much. 
there you go. And you can keep going on your 80s roll. Uh, what's your favorite Halloween movie? Like actual Halloween themed. Oh. Um, I guess if we're so, well, does the like take away from our list today? Uh, well, may... this list today was like, I feel like well, more define what's, what's a Halloween thriller. Movie. It has witches, it has ghosts, it has okay. something. Well, I will go then with Beetlejuice. Okay. I'm going to go with Practical Magic. I was thinking, yeah, there's the Practical Magic. And there's, what, three quarters of the world would probably say Hocus Pocus, but. Oh, um, yes. But because a, who I'm doesn't love a witch? <laughs> I'm going, I'm going, uh, yeah, Practical Magic was a good one. In fact, that was one that I considered for my uh, movies for tonight. Oh, okay. Well, speaking of movies tonight, Eric, do you want to kick us off with what your first pick is? <laughs> Well, my first one may be a little too scary for most people, <gasps> so you're going to have to be prepared, but it is Teen Witch, <gasps> and this one stars Robin Lively, Dan Gutier, Gutier, and it's from the 80s, 1989. Oh. Are you familiar with it? They were still playing on Disney Channel when I was growing up, so. So Teen Witch, uh, it's about as quintessential 80s as you can get right down to the music whenever they're like they're, there's the first <laughs> of the of the theme and it's got the jazz you know the saxophone always comes oh, into yeah. which is a full-out 80s thing and then whenever they get into anything of the romance of course the jazz or the uh saxophone comes right back in it's got the good looking guy in there who drives the convertible of course mm -hmm. it's got the, the dance scenes where in their leotards the girls break into their dance in the uh in the gym in the locker room it's i guess i it's pretty much it, it uh, probably like the kids today will say it's ironic because it's just a movie that's so bad that it's good originally mm -hmm. it was supposed to be the you know teen wolf was all popular so like we've got to make a movie now with a woman so it's supposed to be the counterpart to it and um you know it turned into just a whole thing of its own so the basic premise is the nerdy girl with her nerdy friend is you know overlooked by everyone made fun of by all the popular people so she wants to be you know popular she gets the ability through a magical amulet to uh to be a witch and um she's apparently been around since the beginning of time as this witch yeah. whenever she gets her amulet but then she uh gets it wishes for all the good stuff she gets the good looking guy but her friend, of course, gets pushed to the side as she becomes the most popular girl in school. And she decides, you know what? At the end, surprise, surprise, it's not all worth it and wants just to be her good old self. Um, but it was just, this movie is just super cute. It's got a whole bunch of other things, like I say, in addition to being that just pure 80s. And yes, it's not going to... Uh, get any r ratings is probably straight up pg but one of the yeah, little on the Disney the, one of the little <laughs> things to note is her dad is played by um dick Sargent, who was darren on bewitched so going way oh. back in time so that's like a wow. little nod i don't know if that's like far as i know that's the only other thing he's ever been in other than bewitched um yeah like i say it was just you, you, you know when you watch the movie you just get your fill of once again the saxophone aquanet because that hair it is high it also you have uh you 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 get all that fashion with with the mm -hmm. dudes um going with their you know their, their 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 tank tops you have the women with their big belts and shoulder pads uh mm -hmm. you got definitely get your share of mullets so <laughs> you know, what's not whether intentional or not. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, it was the thing Heck, I had, I don't know if I really had a mullet per se, but I definitely, all right. You know, um, let's see what movie was it? Um, Go oh dirt. boy, the guy, um, Patrick Swayze, 
when he had his long hair. Is it Roadhouse? Yeah, Roadhouse. That oh was gosh, they Road play House. that like every weekend. So <laughs> I'm Road always House. flipping I've through. I'm like, this on again. I had like that's who apparently back in the day I looked like was Patrick Swayze, and but I had wow. the, I had the Roadhouse uh, Patrick Swayze haircut. So yeah, but that's nice. The other thing, a little little interesting thing about this is um, the clock in the beginning. I believe is the same clock from Back to the Future. The house oh. is the same. I mentioned Thriller. It's the same house from uh, the vi- the video there. So we got a little bit of uh, uh, pop culture there. And then the other thing mm. is this was pretty much one of the very first, as I'm making fun, I should not really make fun of it because like I say, I, I think it's, it's just a really fun watch, especially for nostalgia. But it's like the first movie where rap was really sort of ingrained in the teen for the teens, you know, not okay. just being this urban, urban thing where it was just the suburbia teens were all getting into their rap. So yeah, a little fun, little fun thing there. So no, and that's that uh, um, top that is very hot right now. It's, it's pretty much, uh, I don't know. I feel like I see everyone posting about it either on Instagram or TikTok or, you know, everyone wants to duplicate it. And I think I just saw her interviewed about it and, you know, how it became such a hit, but it's, I can say it's just a fun one and it's got our, it's got a witch. So there we go. Yeah. Something to watch on Halloween. Yes. What about you? What's your first one? Okay, Eric, picture it. I'm taking you back to 2000. This movie stars Michelle Pfeiffer and I know Harrison where you're going. Ford. Oh, I do don't you? Going. I don't know where you're going now. Okay, I thought you're going by... Witches of Eastwick. Eastwick. No, no, that's the '80s. Uh, directed by Robert Zemeckis, he did Death Becomes Her. Right. Those, and the music is composed by Alan Silvestri. And I'm shouting this out because he did the music for Practical Magic. And everybody loves that song this time of year, the little opening credit song. But this is What Lies Beneath. I so I've never seen it. Okay. So Michelle Pfeiffer plays the wife of a university research scientist who is played by Harrison Ford. And she believes her lakeside Vermont home, which by the way, could have fooled me. I feel like the set design was done by Nancy Myers, but it's not. If it's like if Nancy Myers did a spooky thriller, but she did it. Um, anyways, the lakeside Vermont home is haunted by a ghost or that she's losing Ooh. her mind. So I think this is PG-13. It definitely doesn't seem like it would be R. Uh, But there's a lot of like mysterious elements to it and it does give off the spooky vibe. It's a fall themed movie. So you get some really great foliage. Yeah. From Vermont, no less, which is, and you get kind of like this dark, but um, also it's, it's just a, it's kind of like there's a dichotomy because there's darkness to it but also this is filmed in like a really beautiful like farmhouse looking house so I think it's just the right level of thriller for people it's not going to keep you up at night is but, it really haunted uh I can't give this away oh I can't so give that's a, a spoiler I can't okay. really, yeah I can't because I feel like if I do like it's just it just won't give do it justice. Mm. Like you really do have to see the movie. It's it's a it's a good movie, and you probably would recognize some of the other people in it. Um, they were all kind of popular around that time period, but it just has this like hold over me since I saw it, and I saw it when I was like thirteen, so it was uh, it was like a couple years after it came out. Was um, it age appropriate for a thirteen-year-old, or were you seeing it a little earlier than you should have? Well, I think it's I guess PG-13, it's just PG. So. Yeah, yeah, it's probably PG um, thirteen. It, it did spook me. Like, there's a couple times where you've got to be like, oh, you know, right. Uh, 
but like not in the like oh there's some guy wearing a pig mask that's jumping <laughs> like it's more thought provoking because there's this mystery element to it like why is this happening and you you're kind of trying to figure out why is this happening and you're also trying to figure out is she crazy or is this really happening so I just, I highly recommend that one. I won't be able to give a lot away because I just feel like it, it, it takes away from, you know, too much of the plot. But I think that if you're looking for something that's mysterious, that's a thriller, that has just the right amount of fall spookiness to it, this is definitely got to be on your list. So. All right. So. What about you? So one of the interesting things about me is we kind of alluded to earlier, I don't do horror movies. My wife loves horror movies. So I like paranormal activity and those <laughs> kind of movies, Halloween and Blair Witch Project, um, all the, uh, the what is it? Oh, Up Blair or no, Witch. Uh, Us yeah. or something like that. Um, oh, like, yeah. I just okay. stay away from them. And I especially don't like creepy kids. Creepy kids just freak me out children of the corn really gotcha so, huh <laughs> never saw it don't want to see it but every year in halloween we do have a concession where we watch a scary movie but mm -hmm. she tames it down for me so like now it's all relative and it's you know it's kind of a little like the list like i remember one year we watched alien okay. and um but then there's some other ones that are mildly there's some like netflix um Halloween movies that are, you know, kind of scary, but, um, you know, kind of comedy as well. There's like Scream, mm -hmm. which is, you know, sure, it's a horror movie, but it's also a comedy. So I've, I've done the Scream. Um, but so that's it's our big thing. Of, and it's always a big negotiation because she's trying to get me to see something a little creepier and I'm trying to get a little more Teen Witch, right? So yeah. um, we always negotiate. So that's coming up. So this list is, you know, perfect timing for us. But yeah. I am going to go probably to the one movie. There's well, there's two movies that literally scared the bejesus out of me, and to this day, <sighs> from my childhood, haunt me. And I really need to be bringing up in therapy. Oh, one of the movies uh -oh. is Jaws, and I have this oh. irrational fear of sharks. And part of the reason is because my parents, when I was, you know, under 10 years old, are having me watch these movies, right? Way too early. But when you grew up, you know, like as a little kid in the 70s, you know, parenting was just very different there. They would mm -hmm. make their cocktail and whatever they were watching, there you I was watching. watching it with them. <laughs> so, but the movie I'm going to talk about also because it sort of coincides with a real life incident. And this Ooh. movie is The Birds by Alfred Hitchcock. Oh my. And it goes, it starts with a story when I was a little kid. And when I was little, I lived in this rural Canadian little town. It's called Amherstburg. I was sort of on the outskirts of Amherstburg, right on Lake Erie. It was a dirt road. Our front yard essentially was a forest my brother hunted and would just walk out the front door to go hunting and wow. our neighbor who is like the you know the neighbors across the street is actually I don't know 150 yards away and it's kind of woodsy there down the street um was the, our other neighbor was Gar Doobie and he drove a backhoe and that was his actually primary transportation right so this was a wow. rural Canada uh environment that i grew up in and one day um like the nearest stop sign was a mile away kind of thing and the bus would just drop you off there and you'd have to walk you know home from there and one day when i uh, i was little i was probably five or six years old my brother and i um, my parents were nowhere to be found and we were locked out of the house and so we're in the front yard and there's a picnic table there and all of a sudden this blue jay started dive bombing us and it oh. literally was trying to peck us in the head 
And we're yeah. like, my brother, he's five years older. So he's a little bit, you know, he's 10. But the two of us like running around the yard is this bird's just attacking us, literally crazy. Yeah. And we end up hiding underneath the picnic table until, you know, for me at the time, it seemed probably like it was about four and a half days before my mom got home. But uh, whatever, it was probably 20 minutes or something like that. I don't know. But it was long enough where we were hiding, you know, bundled together trying to, you know, stay alive because of this angry oh, uh, blue jay. So I've always had this bird thing. Mm -hmm. And then I see birds probably once again when I was eight years old. So still oh. traumatized. And, yeah. you know, you look at it now and the special effects, because this is what, from 1950s, where is it? 19, oh, 1963. Okay. And the special effects are by no means like you look at it, you know, through the lens of today's there. You, yes, yeah. the birds are not real, but the concept <laughs> of it, of these birds overtaking the town and just attacking mm -hmm. people and it, relentlessly coming in through your window and smashing on there, coming down the fireplace. It is just a fear that I actually live with. I, I'll be walking the dogs as you we were talking earlier. And if I see mm -hmm the 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 uh the uh line the electricity line whatever and there's 50 birds up there i get freaked out one night recently we have these hawks that have come into our neighborhood which is kind of crazy because i live in basically downtown phoenix it's not but you got some good you know, small birds for feeding but, but we had these three hawks and one night i go to walk out and it's, it's right at dusk and they're just sitting on the telephone pole right outside um, our gate. And they're just looking at me and they're like, Arr, whatever hawk noise make. Arr, arr. Well, that, I don't even know what that yeah. is. That's like a that dog hawk. I don't know. But I am sitting there with my little, you know, I have this little mutt who's a cocker spaniel mix type dog. You know, he's 19 pounds. And I'm thinking these hawks are going to come down. One of them's going, you know, it's going to be this this assault on us that's that's oh uh, my God. together like i am convinced one of them's gonna like go poke me in the eye so the other one can go grab my dog and off it goes and i like call my wife in fear like oh no the hawks are out to get me and so yeah i have this this big fear and your wife is like oh my god yeah, yeah. Eric. she does not she does not uh <laughs> have the same fear that I do but so this whole movie though it's just relentless of birds coming again and again and doesn't matter where you go they're going to come in and they're going to just peck you until you die hundreds and hundreds of crows or you sit there and you look out the window and they've taken over Ooh. the playground it just to this day creeps me out and I just don't like birds people who have birds as pets I don't get it I just I don't, I don't feel sympathy for birds when you know, bad things happen to them. It's just, oh, I can't Eric. handle it. I know, I know it's me or them. I can't help it. They're out to get oh. me. So and and then, somehow but, you've made it this far. I know. You wait. <laughs> How? When we go to have our Thanksgiving episode, you'll be waiting for me. You're like, where is he? He's not logging on. And you'll find the out. My wife will call him. you and go, yeah, the turkey uh, took him out. So, but no, Alfred Hitchcock, the birds, I mean, Alfred Hitchcock, just in general, I'm a huge fan of his. I think he just, yes. you know, when we talk to um, Ron Oliver, he's views him as the, you know, the master of mystery and just completely mm -hmm. changing the genre. And I have to agree. I, I love all his movies, the suspense, like that's the kind of scary sort of, you know, North by Northwest or you know, rear window, that this crazy suspense. And yeah, it's older and you look at it now and you find it a little bit corny in some ways, but it doesn't matter to me, it holds up. And, but birds is just a pure horror movie. Yeah. Okay. I think a lot of people agreed with you in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 60s, 70s, eight. Well, yeah, I was born in the 60s. So 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, aughts, 10s. 20s so yes still this okay. day all right wow all right, where are you gonna go now i've got i've got i've got a i, I need you to talk so i can settle down, down. yes i'm anxiety okay. right, right now okay okay we're moving back in time from the 60s actually we're Ooh. going to 1955 
This movie stars Vera Clouseau, Simone Signoret, and Paul Maurice, and it was directed by Henri Georges Clouseau. And if you know by these names, you're going to know it's a French movie. <clears throat> it's called Diabolique, which Diabolique. Oh, yes. Okay, so in this classic of French suspense, the cruel and abusive headmaster of a boarding school, Michel de la Salle, who's played by Paul, becomes the target of a murder plot hatched by an unlikely duo, his meek wife and the mistress he blazonly flaunts. The women brought together by their mutual hatred of this man pull off the crime but become increasingly unhinged by a series of odd occurrences after De La Salle's corpse mysteriously disappears. So I watched this movie initially because I was in French class in high school and I was looking for an interesting movie to watch. And I have to say, it really it was really good. I think they, is they very... like remade it, American version. <laughs> Yeah, maybe they did. I don't. I don't know. I haven't found an right. American version, uh, and it's possible because it was so good. It it does definitely throw a Hitchcock feel. Yeah. And if you can get past the fact that it's black and white and that you're gonna have to read some subtitles, then this is definitely a good watch for you because it has a lot going for it. It has these women who you can't understand why they're coming together and they're friends but then this man who is so dislikable and you can understand why you would hate him and you would want them to commit this crime and then but the guilt the almost the 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 third party to this uh whole crime is guilt and how it eats away at you and then when and then you don't know if like these odd occurrences are happening because you feel this unhinged guilt or because something really is happening. Something's coming, you know, back to life or, you know, it, it has just this really unique kind of concept to it that um, is not really, uh, there's nothing taken away by the fact that you're going to have to read some subtitles. Like, you'll still be freaked out by the whole thing, but in a good way, like not in a, you know, this is not cheesy. This is not like uh, gore. This is not anything that'll keep you up at night, but it's a really good mystery. That's really, um, I highly recommend because I don't know anyone in high school, like saying that you watch this in high school, French right. class or for high school French class and that you actually enjoyed it and you watch it probably once every year. I think that speaks volumes. I definitely have heard of it and it's been on that list to watch because it's con it's considered a classic. So, yeah. and like I say, I think either that or there's other ones that have been spun off of the general plot of it that's you know yeah. inspired by and Americanized, but. I think I'm going to put that on my list and watch it right away. Yeah, definitely, definitely make sure it's the 1955 version. And this time of year, sometimes like TCM plays it and you can just record it. But um, yeah, do we I'd get TCM you on uh, our YouTube channel? I think you do. I think you do get Turner Classic. Okay. But uh, it's definitely like there's something about it being from that time period that I think really lends itself to like the creepiness, you know, that like black and white feel the, you know, just the whole spookiness element. So I'm looking really right there. now and in 1996, they did do one with Sharon Stone, Kathy oh. Bates, Chaz Palmieri. But that's not the one we want to see. No, you want the 1955 version. Right. I didn't even know they remade it. Uh, okay, make sure you, yeah, get the old French version. Le Diabolique. Diabolique. So, all right, <laughs> let's just quickly see. So just, oh, nice. You can you can get it on uh, Max, which oh. you can also get um, 
going to off of mine, uh, the Teen Witch is on Disney. So you have to have a subscription to Disney to see that. Or I think Amazon, you can pay for it. Um, and then Birds is on, um, what is Birds on? Birds is on Matt, uh, uh, Peacock. Prime. So okay, well, I think I, you can rent it. I think you can rent it on Prime, but it's free on um, on Peacock. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure with what lies beneath, you can definitely get it on Prime. And okay. uh, so, what's your last one you're gonna discuss? I saved a movie that is one of my favorite movies. My daughter introduced me to it. It's when I had my direct TV, it was the permanent movie that I had recorded because I would just watch oh. it all the time. Kind of like how you watch that one every year. I, I think this movie is just, and it's no surprise that I'm a Hallmark fan because it's got all, it's got, it's, it's, it's got zombies and romance and oh. it's warm bodies. Oh, Okay. All right, so it stars, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, Nicholas Holt. I think that's how you pronounce mm -hmm. it. The little goofy kid so. from It's About a Boy, who this uh -huh. was the first time I saw him again. You're like, wait, how did the hunky, good-looking zombie come from that kid? And yeah. uh, Teresa Palmer, who's been in a whole bunch of things, which she's so good in this. I don't know how she wasn't a major star, but she stayed consistent. Lib Lipton or Tipton. She's been in a whole bunch of things. Rob Cordery, he's fantastic. Even got John Malkovich in it. So it's great cast. But in this movie, basically it's the zombie apocalypse and people are fighting, you know, trying to keep them apart. But somehow R, who is Nicholas Holt, he holds on to a little bit of his memory and he's able to keep a little bit of his humanity and, you know, as they're going through and the, 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 the towns people go through and they just kill zombies as you should be killing zombies, but <laughs> it goes ahead and he's got a little bit of humanity. And when Teresa Palmer's character, who's Julie, you know, he's about to be able to kill her instead, he rescues her and he saves her and he keeps her away from the zombies and they develop a romance and, you know, they fall in love. And even though John Malkovich is her dad who's in charge of killing all the zombies. You know, he has to hide them from them. And it's just, you know, as corny as it is, it's a wonderful, cute love story in the zombie apocalypse. And then when they learn that you can, by just giving them some love, zombies don't have to be bad. They can coexist and zombies can be good and they can live a wonderful life assimilated with all the people so it's just i guess have you ever seen it you know what i i know this movie and i remember when it came 2011, out 2011 I, I think it is i didn't see it because i think the concept of it was just so silly to me that you could it, like actually have a relationship with a zombie it, but i do remember he didn't look as like deranged and not right. hot as the walking dead people you're right it you need to run skip bike zoom your car space shuttle you need to watch it it is a great movie a great movie so i'll watch the diablique and you need to watch warm bodies but you really also need to watch what lies beneath because i'm pretty sure your wife would like that well, I'm i'm down with that too but you don't watch that every and, year. And who I actually do watch that oh, every okay. year. <laughs> so these are I all on the uh, annual playlist now, huh? I was going to say I've uh, I've now bought these on Prime, so I just okay. <laughs> play them every year. But uh okay, my last one, Eric, we're going even further back in time. We're going to 1940. Whoa. Yeah, we're going. This movie stars Joan Fontaine and Laurence Olivier, and okay. it is directed by Alfred Hitchcock, and it is called Rebecca. <laughs> and movie. this was, 
Yeah, it it was his first um, American movie. I think he was uh, before that doing them in England, but this was his first uh, coming to America. So the story of a young woman who marries a fascinating widower only to find out that she must live in the shadow of, of his former wife, Rebecca, who died mysteriously several years earlier. The young wife must come to grips with the terrible secret of her husband or her handsome cold husband, Max De Winter. She must also deal with the jealous, obsessed Miss Danvers, the housekeeper who will not accept her as the new mistress of the house. So I initially watched this movie in humanities in college. And that's because you're kind of dealing with the humanity aspect of it, right? There's this woman and she fell in love with this widower basically when he was on vacation to be honest so he wasn't even at this house then she comes back as his new wife to this i would say mysteriously creepy mansion that is upon a high cliff and all that jazz and he's not who he was on vacation which hey who is who they are on <laughs> vacation point. right I mean, you're your best version then. And then you come back to your creepy house and you're like you are. So, but, but there's a, there's a secret to him that has to do with his mysteriously, uh, his, his wife who mysteriously died. And there's an aspect of her having to either come to terms with it and accept that or, you know, not, and then life is hard so anyways she she has to also deal with this housekeeper who is quite frankly crazy and this obsessive fascination with the first wife who uh you can never basically compete with and you can't right. compete with a ghost so it, it just was very freaky to me and it's it stood out to me. I don't watch this one every year, but I watch it maybe once every two to three years because it's so creepy. I did not realize this was the first uh, American one, but yes, it is a great movie. In fact, I want to say I watched it within the last couple months. It the is... original one? Because I think yeah. they have remade it and I don't yeah. know why. I, but... I No, definitely original. You've got to rent it on uh, Amazon. I think that's that the only seems... way you can get it is uh, renting or buying on Amazon. Now I'm going to have to buy it. I didn't need to buy it. <laughs> but it is a shame. There should be like the Alfred Hitch Hitchcock channel or it should be on um, one of the streaming services should just figure out a way to get all of the the the, the, the whole catalog of Alfred or Hitchcock. Or there should be like this time of year, we should be having like Hitchcock days where it's there like are. Just days on days. Yeah. I haven't seen it. And yeah, I think if you're just watching, like you said, Turner, Turner classic movies or something like that, you'll probably be able to catch it. Um, but no, it's a great, yeah. I, I'm, I'm behind you here. It's a great movie. And it's, you know, I had my birds, which is kind of the, um, the scary movie because of the birds coming. So it's more of a horror movie. Whereas that this one's just a weird mental thriller. Yeah. And there are creepy aspects to it because yeah. the house is creepy and right. things about him are creepy and things yeah. about the housekeeper are creepy. So it has like, you know, and birds is also like a psychological thriller because it plays on like, you know, your susceptibility to just about anything. And correct. Right. So there's a lot to him. Like there's so much to unpack with Hitchcock. You're like, oh, yes. so. but the, uh, yeah, Rebecca. Yeah. It's a great, we could probably do a whole episode on just Alfred Hitchcock and uh, just once again, be fascinating because those movies are so good. Yeah. And mysterious. All right. Do you have one picked out for this year? Uh, so last year um, I made Nick sit through uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, which was with Winona Ryder and right. Keanu Reeves and stuff. Uh, love me some Winona Ryder. Okay, so Heathers. I picked it. Yes, I thought I, I thought about Heather's for my list. By the way, that is a good one. Uh, but I picked it because the the styling and the wardrobe was absolutely phenomenal. 
but the movie itself was so disappointing i was like this is what is this trash oh no, so that's this terrible this year i'm kind of like i don't know I, I'm, I'm not sure yet i'm sure it'll come to me you've given me some options but this I, is warm burn or warm bodies i tell you yeah i just need um this is my only chance to get him to watch something that's slightly spooky like how your wife gets you to watch right uh so like some i gotta kind of i i gotta kind of pick something that's a little bit uh got a little bit of gore in it that i can get away with because we watched uh the year before last we watched uh uh the one with johnny depp and christina ricci where he's the headless oh, or sleepy, sleepy hollow, hollow. And that was really great. And he actually did like that. But see, there is an element of, of bored of that one. Uh, it's, it's funny you mentioned that one because that's what I was thinking about proposing this year for Halloween was Sleepy Hollow. I mean, stylistically, that movie is beautiful. So there's, I, I don't know. There, and I don't know all the details because I didn't watch it, but there's just some sort of ick with johnny depp in the whole divorce case like that all being well, i don't know like who was right or who was wrong yeah just like both him and amber heard to me just there just seems to be some ickiness to both of them i think you kind of have to like separate it from you have to kind of mentally try to separate it from people's like work because also he was he wasn't even with her then he was so much younger this is from like 2000 oh, yeah. or 2001 well, this is the whole music thing i mean i said michael jackson for thriller for the song and yeah he's yeah. got definitely some things to unpack there Ugh. so all right yeah well, there we go. So get a bowl full of Reese's peanut butter cups, some dots. The other thing I always, uh, I will snag are the little individual Twizzlers. I like, uh, okay. I like those too, but I, I eat licorice fairly often, whereas dots is kind of my Halloween thing. I have to say for Halloween, okay. but I, I'll go through Make and get the big bag, you know, the big mm -hmm. bag of, of candy and I'll pull out a bunch of the uh the dots to to save for myself well make sure you also with your dots have your autumn teeny definitely definitely <laughs> for, it's a little hard to do I that can. because we now today is our for august today's october 21st and mm -hmm. it is the first day under a hundred this seems like we finally it's nine now it's Let's see what it is. It was 90 last I looked. Oh, I take it back. Oh, no. My phone says 100 it... right on the dot. It's supposed to be like oh. 90, 96 or something, but apparently it hit 100. But tomorrow it's supposed to break. So let's hope if okay. it, it didn't happen today. So let's hope it's tomorrow. And then I can break into my uh, autumn teeny because it's a little oh, hard so to enjoy that autumn season when it's 100 degrees. <laughs> It is. And today, uh, yesterday we were 91 and, uh, today was our break day, which now it's 80. <laughs> nice. like, oh, okay. Let me put my scarf on. <laughs> hey, you, you want to get your autumn on? I'll, I'll talk about my daughter again. So, you know, she moved to Boston. Boston yeah. is the craziest thing. It is beautiful during the week and then rains every Saturday, Sunday. It has done this since she has moved there. The weekend, the week wow. we moved her in was gorgeous. Every weekend yeah. since then, it has rained Saturday, Sunday, and today was no exception, but she's just like, damn it, it's the weekend I'm going. And so she's got herself her raincoat. She's got her like rain boots and off they went to the apple orchard and pumpkin patch. And you want to get your New England, your New England pumpkin patch, apple orchard. That's talking some fall spirit there. She's not far from Salem. She could throw a witch right. trial in there. Yeah, well, they're planning on they're planning on going. So, yep. But they, Good. Uh, Good you know, for so her. despite the rain, you know, I think it was when they went most mostly drizzle, but still was raining. Um, and it's funny. Next weekend, Saturday, Sunday, eighty percent chance of rain. So, all right. But hopefully she'll get up to to Vermont to see the nice fall leaves and everything. Yeah. That should be uh, 
ending pretty soon they'll all be falling off but we'll see i know and then season of the sticks yep (laughs) okay well it's time to say wish you a scary good night oh my gosh and i wish you a safe and spooky halloween (laughs) okay good night night air